Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the commentary desk for the final time today as we move into our last best of two set. This time it's Eager versus Enemy. My name is Bart. His name is Ken. 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 It's Ken, right? Uh, it says oh, Kevin. Kevin oh, Meyer. Oh, sorry, my Kevin. bad. Kevin. Kevin. Uh, this is Kevin, also forgot. known as Adonis. And uh, apparently you're very small, so hold on. Let me just... There you go, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. Now we're, now we're equal. Um, Eager versus Enemy. Enemy, adding some new guys to the roster. A couple of... Uh, Legacy players, I guess. Yep. Switching it up. Uh, yeah. Matty Pocket coming in. Bronx Bombers uh, now leaving the team as well. Yes. So they picked up Vetti. I'm a, a kind of new blood. But I really think the story here is going to be Jerby versus Lassus. Uh, but the schedule first here. We've had a couple games today. Uh, first off, we saw Fnatic take out Trick Esports 2-0. And then just recently, Team Solo Mid versus AFK split it down the middle. Yeah. Uh, so I've, I've gotten all my picks right so far. You have Eager uh, twice here. I, I had them split. I was the, you everyone, this game splitting. everyone picked Eager. I said they would split. Wow. Indeed you did as we see the graphic coming up here. Um I was, and you're you're alone in that. I'm 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 on an island. I'm on an island and there's still time to actually yeah, like get your minutes. picks in in game. Like one minute maybe. Yeah, maybe. yeah, go. So if, if you think uh think Eager's gonna win, guys, and you're and you're watching and you haven't put it in the client, be sure to go get it, get your fantasy points online and make your way into that Nemesis Executioner skin that's just the coolest skin around. Um so, Kevin, yeah, you were, you were mentioning uh, Jerby and Lassus. You really think the mid lane is going to really dictate this one? Yeah, I mean, these are former teammates dating all the way back to the root days and then into right before they joined uh, Team Dignitas. Mm. And now they're obviously on to Eager. But Lassus makes his return to the mid lane. And Jerby has been a mid laner for a long time. And just to note that these stats are Challenger's Cup stats for Lassus. So the Challenger Cup level plays for him. Right. And look at the difference in KDAs there. I mean, Jerby didn't play very many games, but Jerby had under, you know, one kill. He only played two games. It, it was against Team Solo mid, to be fair. That's true. That's, that's right. It was that's, just those two games. Those okay, stats you're right, for you're him right. are too indicative. Let's, let's ignore Jerby's stats. Well, let's look at Lassus' stats there. The 531, okay. 4.8 KDA out of the Challengers Cup. So he was very dominant there. Yes. Um, as we saw, they, they didn't lose. So. <laughs> yeah, and he had seven weeks to practice up for mid lane for, obviously, the summer split now. Yeah. And I, I think he's going to come in strong. And that's going to be the key matchup. Can Jerby hold off Lassus, who is a very hyper-aggressive player? Super aggressive. Um, also, I mean, to me, th there's also a question of, like, Vettium, the player they've gotten mm -hmm. to replace the, in the Hunter role on enemy esports, if he loses to Kabam. Eager's sub, yeah, what does that say about enemies' opportunities in it, this season? Right, it's it's that's got it's like a morale thing for here. Yeah, I mean this here. is this is the other really low level team coming mm -hmm. from the Challenger Cup at least, and if they can't even contest with them, it's going to be a rough split for them. Yeah. But picks and bans are ready. We're about to get underway. Enemy esports. Versus Eager. Eager has first pick. Yeah, so the, they'll be in the uh, in the blue here. Enemy will be the red. We didn't really touch on Awesome to the Max uh, versus the, the Awesome to the Max and a totally matchup. Awesome to the Max, uh, one of the strongest, if not the strongest player on the side of Enemy. Looking at him and probably Matty Pocket as the two most consistently powerful players. Soul Shiner uh, can be off and on, but can have some really big games, as, as can Jeremy Vettium, as we said, still, still looking to really prove himself. But um, And Anatoly kind of... Uh, not really that aggressive style soul lane. It really looks more to farm and, and kind of calculate. And the he's victory. very he's very utility based for their team Indeed. comps. Uh, if you looked at the summer qualifiers, he played a Ymir, and he actually was bested in that lane in the soul lane matchup versus uh, I don't recall who it was exactly, but he made big plays in team fights, and that's what I expect him to do: is draft a god that he can get through early game with, and whether he's ahead or behind, make sure to make the big plays, the big freezes, the big stuns. Chocks. First pick coming out. Chalk and yeah, these type of gods Chalk, for the soul Ymir, lane. Those type of guys. Not really what you think about with with Anatoly, but Eager will first pick Athena. And they're likely to run this in the jungle, uh, as likely as it is that it's the support well, or the, the solo It could be or, anywhere. That, yeah. That's really the key that we see. They, we, we saw them draft these Tri-Guardians, and they picked these gods that can actually go anywhere on the map. Yeah, Sobek very highly valued uh, between these two teams as well. Enemy, we'll take the Thor for Soul Shiner. Really uh, the god that we see him on the most, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and what were they going to pair with it here? Sylvanas is banned out. They'll take the Neath, who has been just skyrocketing in terms of uh, desirability. Yeah, we, we saw it last year as well. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, it's these flex picks, right? That are really being the first couple picks we're seeing now in this summer split meta. The Neath, the Athena, the Sobek, that you pick them early, and it's very hard to counter pick them considering you don't know where they're going on the map. Neath now, a prominent solo laner and middle laner, as well as Hunter, uh, Snoopy playing it last game. So, yeah, I wonder what, what Eager will pick. If they'll pick a mage, like an Ogni or something, for. Or Lassus to go into that that Neath and force her into the Hunter role, and then do something like draft the Shibalanke, right? I, I think they might draft another Guardian here. Take the Sobek, perhaps here. 
Um, wouldn't make a lot of sense, I think. Geb, potentially, they would take. They don't want to deal with that, but uh, Sobek brings a little bit more damage potential, and they could still pick a third Guardian as well mm -hmm. if they wanted to. Uh, Bacchus likely to still be available. But anyway, they will take that mid lane mage for Lassus, and it's his, uh, I think, premier god in the last last few months in, in Poseidon. Yeah, it's, it's a very aggressive god that fits well into his playstyle of that early aggression. He really likes to fight over mid camps, and the Athena taunt into the Poseidon Kraken yes. sets up for a lot of kills. Typically, players do not have beads that early, so if they get out of position, Blast is going to look for an early first blood. He's also got pretty decent kind of counter-initiation against the Thor yes. when he gets his beads. If Thor comes crashing down, he's able to counter with the Kraken. As well as cripple out the hammer, but it's Sobek picked up by enemy here. So they're they're counter-picking Eager as much as they are picking for themselves here, it seems like. Kicking that Neath off the board, taking the Sobek away, as we know. Eager likes to draft those Guardians. The band's coming out now. Enemy will get rid of the Geb. So, I like that. So Bacchus potentially, or even maybe a support Guan Yu. Uh, coming up for Eager. They have a ban remaining. Maybe to be targeted at the mid lane. Yeah, uh, they don't think that Neath is going there. They ban off the Isis. So they're going to take out one of Jerby's better gods. He also has a, a fairly good Giannis and Agni, and that's what I expect him to be. Oh, right there. Giannis is going to be picked up. Uh, his Giannis play wasn't too strong in the summer qualifiers, his relegation match. No. He even said so himself on Twitter. He had some really good Agni games, so expect him to make be looking for a lot more plays but really what it is is that global presence coming out from enemy they have the thor they have the knee thought world weaver mm -hmm. and they have Giannis with the portal going to be able to get his team in and out of anywhere yeah they seem to draft something now that can continue to kind of capitalize on their ability to aggress and initiate from very far away right the Neath ultimate plus the thor and then Giannis able to follow it up but with what is the question and will they put that so back into the duo lane or will he go to the solo aries hercules Drafted by Eager here, so they will take that second Guardian. It's going to be the very damage-oriented one, indeed, in Ares. The likely to be the Shibalanke Ares lane, Hercules soloing you know, in the jungle. You know what this does also? It also locks out a tier. Because Anatoly yeah. is historically the only player to have... He, he's created the anti-tier matchup. Ares cripples out tier, and he, he can't use his abilities on lane, and Ares is able to clear that out. Anatoly is very famous for that back from Season 1, and this basically forces you into a, a chalk or a different type of warrior. Yeah, just a, a sustain-oriented warrior. Just something that can split the lane against the Hercules. Um, the question is going to be, will Awesome to the Max build that Heart Seeker going into what will assuredly be the Mystical Male Rust Hercules? It, it's going to be interesting on what he wants to do. I, I do agree with you that I think Awesome to the Max is probably the, the best player now that Bronx is no longer on this roster. And it's a question of, is Soul Shine, are Soul Shiner and Jerry going to be on point together? Because they're both players that... Their highs are very high, and their lows are very low. You're, you're right. I think I think you hit the nail on the head there. But it's Eager versus Enemy Esports. Let's introduce the squads here as we got a minute until the minions spawn. Eager, they're the blue team. Five, bottom side of the minimap, left side of your spectator UI, wearing the blue trunks. It's Anatoly in the soul lane. It's Hercules. Dare to care in the jungle as Athena, Lassus mid lane, Poseidon, Aurora, and Kabam will be your duo lane. Ares and Shibalanke. Their opponents are Enemy Esports with new roster additions. Only a couple of members of the original squad still around. But it's awesome to the max in the soul lane as Chalk. Soul Shiner will be your jungle Thor. Jerby in the mid lane as Giannis. Matty Pocket plus Vedium. Duo lane as Sobek and Neath. The uh, the beta lane. Yep. I'd, I'd say Soul Shiner. You know, most of their members have changed out. Soul Shiner is actually the only true original member left. Awesome to the max was either kicked or bitched. I'm not sure in the middle of the season. So Soul That's Shiner, right, yeah. the only one who was able to truck it out through all of the spring split. A lot of the early game is going to be on him. And we actually have Double Hog coming out from them. So they're, I don't think either of these teams are going to be looking to invade early. The Athena really has no invade potential. She has the slow, but because it's a Chalk and a Thor who increases his physical power, the closer enemies are, it, it's too risky. And it looks like a Tri-Camp start? Yeah. Uh, is this going to be... Well, we saw it in the last game there. Mm -hmm. A very, a very aggressive Tri-Camp start. Anatoly will go for it with the Aircare here. What do you think about the idea, or the, the option here that Anatoly's elected for, to go for the Blue Stone over that Mystical Mail Rush that the Chalk has gone for? You would, you would really expect these items to be reversed, given the gods. I think Anatoly will... I, I think he might have been expecting the invade, and that could be potentially why they started at those back camps. I, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. The blue buff would be enough to sustain him without Blue Stone Pendant, but he's likely to go into the Mystical Mail right after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and we, we may even see Chalk go back for the Blue Stone. We've seen that be... A uh, fairly popular, especially if the early game doesn't go so well for you. But look at this early on, Dare to Care. He's going to go hang out with Lassus in the mid lane, and and Anatoly's going to forgo some gold here for the experience instead. 
So eager, uh, min-maxing a little bit, and they'll take they'll take their chances with the Hercules solo. Yep. And Jeremy has actually gone to solo his back camp. Soul Shiner's gonna he's gonna lose a little bit of gold, but he will get that full experience. And now look and dare to care. That's what's important. Look at dare to care and Lassus. They're gonna go take the other side back camps, and that's gonna make it tough for Jeremy and Soul Shiner. So eager out out strategizing here, enemy a little bit. They'll they'll get the benefit of this extra back camp, and unless Thor and Giannis can respond in kind on that back left side camp that of Eagers. It will be the small advantage for the boys in blue. They have a lot of poke, but Jerby was scared there. This could actually be a bad spot for Lassus. Yeah, he took a ton of burst, and it will likely be the first one. It will be indeed. Soul Shiner will fall quickly as well. It's a one-for-one one trade, but the bonus gold goes to the side of enemy with the first blood. Yeah, that was really risky. You saw Jerby kind of hang back there, knowing they would come back in the lane, and it was uh -oh, just... Uh-oh, uh-oh, Dare to Care. He may be going down here. Shotgun's available, but he only gets hit by one of the balls. Dare to Care nicely dashing away from that one. Yeah, the steal was great, but they were a little bit mistimed. As Vedium actually picks up a roar, so enemy went off to a strong start. The presence of Neath early on against an Ares who, if he doesn't have control of the lane, he just gets bullied. And enemy, great start. First blood and two kills on two different sides of the map. Yeah, Ares does have that bonus movement speed from the chains, as well as the knock of immunity out of the flame shield. And it's only actually, as the archers continue to hit him, he'll start ticking back up. Off into the max, he needs another axe toss. Won't get it, those three archers. A little bit too much for him to sustain through. It was also a risky if he kept up that up with the Hercules combo coming out. Mm -hmm. He was getting a little too close to the tower, didn't want to keep that up. Very what? nearly a kill, though. Certainly a lot of pressure. Lassus and Dare to Care split the second round of mid camps as well. A little bit more efficient than enemy. That's keeping them uh, closer than th they really they should be, only down 300 gold after first blood and a second kill. Can we take a look at Poseidon? It's going to be important if he hits five here. Yeah, yeah, he will hit five here. They also have the ultimate coming out from Dare to Care. So if Lassus wants to engage on these mid-camps, he's going to be able to. But Soul Shiner actually might be looking for a gank on the duo instead of the mid-camps. This is going to be completely unexpected, and Kabam may not know it's... No, they're going to, they're going to like, not to. Yeah, they... It a good thought, though. I mean, they're they're really they weren't looking to gank. They were looking to pick off the support on the rotation. Yes. But wisely, there, Aurora will sit that one out, and uh, they'll give up the left camp right side. It's going towards Eager for the moment. Yes, they'll, they'll hog it. They didn't want to. Did Anatoly get that stun? I don't think he did. He thought they used as well. The Kraken hits him. Anatoly going down very very quickly. Will likely die here. Puts oh, up the boulder, he and it does off. a ton of damage, hitting three times. It looks like on the awesome to the max there. Who will go down to Dare to Care? The shield wall exploding. It ends up being a two for two trade and. Enemy, they really didn't need to give those kills away. That was enemy's fight to win. If they had if they had been able to kill Anatoly, they would have won that fight mm -hmm. clean. Because Dare to Care wouldn't have got his ultimate off to to hit them huge. And then Anatoly still able to get the boulder off. The heal ticking too much for enemy to be able to burst down. And and that makes a lot of space for Kabam. Yes. Um as Vedium was back into the base, he's gonna get a full wave to himself. And he's going to have a free back as well. So he's feeling good about himself now. He's on pace to kind of catch back up to the Neath. He has the two assists to his name. Although Neath did get credited for a kill there uh, at, at the Heartseeker completion. So she'll have a couple stacks ahead. But uh, it's it's basically drawn back to even here, even with those early kills in the duo lane. And uh, same, same for the gold overall. It's that, that lead has been dropped to under 200 gold now for enemy. As, as a pause comes out from the boys of Eager, Anatoly uh, DCing there momentarily. We'll be right back into this one. But... Uh, so enemy, I mean, can they can they build on this early advantage is the question. It, it was really crushing. I thought they were in a good spot. If they had been able to pick Anatoly and win that fight cleaner, they would have been a much better spot. But Eager has been able to respond in kind to them. They're only 500 gold down. They're only the first blood down really at this point, and it's a it's a close game. But this is what they need to do. They have the Neath, they have the Thor. Look for the early aggression in Gold Fury. Athena sees them. Dare cares here. She'll have a big taunt if she wants it. And yeah, Athena will do a lot of damage out of that. Vedium quite low. Still trying to fight for position here, but enemy esports will take the Gold Fury. Ares chain will be snatching back Matty Pocket. He worth. will definitely go down to that one. But yeah, as you mentioned, screaming worth all the way back uh, in that 11 more seconds of respawn for Matty Pocket there. Yeah, but it was poorly timed. All the buffs are spawning. Eager knows they have to back. They get a kill. They lose the Gold Fury, but they're going to be able to get, you know, the stuff after the stuff, like F. Dot likes to say. They're stealing. Every, is that going to be every single buff stolen? That's yeah, one. unless Chalk can contest this, this right side. Yeah, so they, they've cleared out three of the buffs, and looks like Chalk's going to be enough to scare off Eager from stealing that, but they lose all their buffs. That's a bad spot to it's be in. It's still about a 900 gold yes. advantage over from enemy after that gold fury, so um, they do lose their buffs, and, and it, it kind of comes down to this next four-minute period. So b before the 10-minute mark, can Eager do something with all this bonus golden experience that they've stripped away from enemy and the buffs that they have under their belt? I think that neutralized it, because enemy was already 500 up. Now it's only a 700 gold lead. That gold fury only gave them 200. Yeah, that's... And now they don't have any buffs coming into these... They'll lose the blue as harpies. well, so that's the fourth buff they'll be taking from them. That's bad. It's it's just uh, a little bit too much bend, maybe. 
Yeah, and, and now Lassus, like I was trying to say, is they're going to have all these buffs for these mid-game team fights. Mm -hmm. That's critical. Most most notably the speed. Soul Shatter may not be able to keep up or shut down anyone that he normally would be able to. Yeah, that's right. Those, that, those buff cycles are about four minutes long, so it's kind of like between about 5.30 and 9.5 and yes. minutes can Eager get something done with this massive buff advantage. Mid camps are about to spawn here. Dedekir's ult is still up. That's going to be important here if they want to look for a, a, an engage. And again, it looks like uh, enemy, they're going to concede the right side. Two, even the weakened Eager. Uh, they were fairly low on mana, and Dedekir was on the right side, but... Yeah, they'll take this camps free. Jerby, he may try to come through for this one. They'll take the safer path and will not get either one of those camps. Dedekir may look to re-engage as Soul Shiners push forward ahead here. Look Takes quite a bit of damage from Aurora, and that's a problem with uh, not having a level advantage over the Guardians. Aurora, level 7. Soul Shiner, only level 8. Takes a ton of damage from... Just two spells. Chains do a lot of poke, and if he's able to get one or two off, that's that's the strength and weakness of Ares. He lives and by, dies by those chains. If he's able to get them off and stay alive, he can completely zone out or get players in kill, kill range. However, if he misses it, then what does he have? Right. He can't slow anyone. He can't, can't CC anyone. He'll have to use his ultimate to even set up another kill. Yeah, he, he really runs out of spells quickly, and spells aren't on short cooldowns either. And, uh, and the flames leave a lot to be desired if you don't have the chains applied already. Not mm -hmm. that it steroids the damage, it's just that extra percent damage on top of the ticking really, really hurts versus just some very minor uh, percent damage coming out from the chains. Dare to Care has good positioning versus Bedium here. They're going to force him in an awkward spot with that Shibalanke ultimate and the, with the darts, Kabomb secures that kill. And that will even out this lane completely now. Yeah, I was actually really worried about this. Jablanke went into the Heartseeker. Neef has the heal in her kit on Unravel. So the Heartseeker makes sense. She doesn't need to, to worry about anything else. But now that Kabam has a kill, he has that extra 5 that power, five damage, and yeah. he has lane control, he doesn't need the healing. He's just going to be able to completely outbox Vedium. Yeah, exactly what I was thinking as well. I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. He's going to have the bonus stacks as well, adding uh, currently like another 8 power and then the 5 from the passive is 13 more. Here we go. It's initiation in the mid lane. There's an ultimate active on to Lassus. However, he has this counter initiation we talked about in the picking phase, and they will return kills. Aurora may find a second as well. Jerby, no, he'll barely make it out in time from this one. Is there a collapse coming out? No, but he's in the awkward spot. Has that ultimate available if he wants it? No, he does not. I'm sorry. So he's forced to walk back the long way. Dare to care trying to clear the wave here. He needs to be careful though. He could easily oh the taunt. The taunt still hit him. Able to get through. Yeah, that, that actually happens with the portal. The portal, if you can get it off and you're close enough, it actually sucks you through the wall. So even if you get stunned, this actually happens with Sir Ket as well. I actually uh, had this okay. interaction last Madness. night. Yes. No 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 with uh excuse me, last breath. If ah. you last breath a Giannis who just gets his portal off, he'll actually port through in the middle of it. He'll still take the damage, gotcha. but it sucks you up. Yeah, the, those portals, they gobble you and take you away to a safe place. Well, Jerby, he, uh, he, he's, he's gotten this one moving for himself fairly well. He's keeping pace with Lassus. Lassus has died three times in this game. Looks like enemy. You know, it's, it's the age-old Eager strategy. You'll hear us harp on it, I'm sure, the entire split. And, and as long as Eager remains in the Pro League, that as long as, uh, as Lassus has been playing the game, the strategy has been just kill the Lassus and the rest will follow. Soul Shiner, though, he gets picked up. Beads on cooldown. And they knew it. And yep. uh, they'll just abuse him. And it's a strategy to, to really camp Lassus because of how aggressive he is. He's sometimes out of position, especially considering there's a Thor in the game. Mm. But what Eager is doing is, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but they're basically baiting Lassus. Enemy commits so much to him that Eager is able to follow up with with the Dare to Care ultimate being able to be there. Aurora coming in with no escape afterwards. Yeah, I'm looking at there's, Aurora. There's, there's a lot of counter engage. Aurora potential. getting pulls, right? You don't see that really happening very often, right? That the Ares successfully pulls targets. I mean, there's only two beads online for enemy. That's true. Beads, like... Sobek Ultimate, and Giannis Ultimate, Chalk Ultimate, all do have CC immunity, as does Thor's for that matter, but he really needs that beads for the cripples that are on the team. Ares and Poseidon really shut down everything that he needs to do in these fights in terms of mobility, so... And that's the thing, though. They're committing all those ultimates on Thalassus, yes. so they're down when Aurora comes rolling in. So here, here's the, the lane dynamic issue, though, in the left side. It's 50 stacks to 20... Or uh, was that 30 now? 33 stacks. So, it, you know, it's about a 20 power advantage plus the 5 out of the passive. 25 bonus power for Shibalanke. Neath cannot box. Plus 2 bonus levels. A lot of extra HP for Kabam, and it's continuing to go that way. And this could very well be the breaking point for this game is if they, on the side of the enemy, aren't able to slow Kabam down. And they're going to look for a fight here. Roy's going to change out, chain out Manny Pocket, and the blink taunt just barely missing. Dare to care. Dare to taunt. Dare to taunt. Just off the mark Lassus, here. Yeah, Lassus feeling himself. He's going in on a Soul Shiner. Who's going to pop his beads and Mjolnir's a two-minute away, but that's a, uh, a Thor that can't really re-engage. He's going to stick around and farm with a red buff. 
has that ultimate available if he wants to use it, but uh, Eager actually not going to try to force the Gold Fury there. A little surprised. Fantastic beads coming out from Soul Shiner there. If he didn't get those off before the Kraken came, he would have gotten knocked up in place, and the Whirlpool damage would have been able to finish him off That's while right. he was still stuck in it. Look at this very, very early mystical, I'm sorry, uh, Midgarian mail for uh, Miss Athena. Dare to care. Normally, like we saw in the last game, you'll see uh, you'll see a Void Stone or some kind of damage hybrid item for the Athena to come out to help a little bit with some of that mid-game damage, but instead it will be that anti-attack speed item. They have enough magical damage across the board that he doesn't need it. They have the Poseidon, but they also have the Ares, who has it fallen behind. He's hitting all his chains, he's hitting his no escapes, and actually pulling people in. But, again, like you said, the Void Stone might be good to augment this, too. It's all trainer. He runs right into a Whirlpool and is forced to turn tail there as Lassus sees that rotation coming and... Well, he will, he will let enemy know that they have a ward there, but he's okay with that for now as, as it keeps him safe for the moment. This is a pretty good candidate game for a Pythagoras piece. Even though we saw Hades yes. pick it up a couple games ago when there was another mages, this, in this game with the three mages, and, and Ares really could benefit from, from it as well. He may even pick that up as a sixth item if this game goes late. I think you'll for sure see it at some point in this game. It, it'd be wrong not to. Lassus could have bought it instead of Bancroft's Talon. He does lose a little bit of damage, but because he's typically the first one dying in these fights, he doesn't want to do that. Dare to care. He may get plucked here. If Matty Pocket can line it up, he had the angle, but elects not to go for it. It would have been suicide. Lassus yeah. right there with Kraken. And Matty Pocket, while he plucks people, he's also stuck in that position right, yes. right as it happens. Yeah, the actual kind of tail, or I'm sorry, uh, charge prey, it like hits and then kind of attaches and then throws. Mm -hmm. And those are all separate components, so... He's forced to stay rooted to get all that accomplished, and so it can be can be counter initiated. And God forbid you miss the charge prey, and then you're really in trouble. Oh, then you're just he's gonna he would have to ultimate right after to mm. escape any potential follow up. Mid camp's about to come up again, and we've seen contention not happen at the mid camps, but immediately after on rotation, Soul Shider and Jerby always grabbing theirs and then trying to engage on the other side. This time though, Eager's in position to grab these first spawns. Yeah, they'll take the left side spawn here aggressively. Aurora gets two chains on the Soul Shiner. 50% of his HP just gone like that. Dare to care. Does he have the dash available to get in there? No, I think he just used it as well. And and Lassus is Poseidon, really nowhere to be found in that engagement. Anatoly, he hits his second spell. Really wanted the first there, and they're just gonna smack Jerby around, get him down poke. to 50% HP as well. And yeah, getting poked out a little bit here is enemy Thor just making his way back out of the base after being forced back. And, and Lassus will take this opportunity to go back as well. This is where picks are very important coming into this 13, 14 minute mark. Because any pick, especially on either a mid laner, on a global presence god like Thor, or on the support, is going to lead to a Gold Fury attempt for the winning team. Yeah, basically anybody but the soul laner that goes down at this point should open up the Gold Fury. For at least an attempt. Right? That's right, yeah. They're also so they're going to be looking. They might even try and bait out Soul Shiner's ult again uh, with heavy warding. You see them. You, you see Eager. They don't really have a lot of wards right now to deal with Soul Shiner ulting. They don't have any vision on the Gold Fury, and that's where they're going to start to set up. Yep, then really the popular Sentry Ward we're coming it, coming out from these mid laners now. Lassus goes for the, the god damage there over the wave clear, and he'll eat uh, a nice chunk of his own as a nice wall comes out from Soul Shiner. Lassus couldn't be happy about that, but he'll, he'll lifesteal it back up nicely with his Vampiric Shroud uh, in addition to that Bancroft's Talon. Beats 3 is well available for the eager mid laner. And that could factor in to be quite important in this next set of fights if uh, he gets initiated on is able to get that counter initiation Kraken. Here's a roar. He's got an aggressive position here. Matty Pocket, yes, he will go for the pluck back this time. They're investing the alley oop is there, this. and they're dumping into a roar. But here comes the Athena ultimate. No escape coming out as well, forcing out the Aegis and the Thor ultimate. Matty Pocket channeling his. He'll get the first damage. Kraken off the mark. A roar does eat that Giannis ultimate. The Neath ultimate used as well to secure the kill. But Matty Pocket dead in return. Soul Shiner down as he goes back into the whirlpool. The ultimate coming over the top from Hercules, getting a lot done. But Lassus will fall to awesome to the max. And now the silence from Chuck. Anatoly looking like he's going to fall as well. Vetti, I'm credited for that kill. Kabam backpedaling, now realizes he has to bail. Can he make it out in time? Athena blocking for him as she can, and indeed they will. Enemy recoups a lot of kills there. They pull ahead in the gold department. They could even look at the gold fury if they were feeling greedy. But eight kills to nine now at 15 minutes as they, they win their first engagement. Yeah, they're going to take the tower in mid lane off of that. That's going to really open up the map, allowing Soul Shanner to roam some more, potentially get some kills. But what a great disengage by enemy. They hard committed on Aurora there. And I was, I, I was very concerned that they were going to lose that yeah. fight clean. You saw a quick double kill come out for Team Eager, last of securing that. But Enemy was able to back off, wait for Eager to burn everything just like they did on the Initiate, and then re-engage there. And you saw Jerby hit a huge snipe on Aurora, finishing him off, and then just 
funneling those unstable vortexes through the team. Yeah, and, and the you know you really needed to get more out of that Hercules ultimate. If you get yes. take a fight in that little tiny corridor, a big team fight, he only was able to hit the Giannis with it. Just couldn't find the right position to throw the boulder, and it didn't change the fight as you would have expected from a rotation from your soul lander coming all the way. And you look at what Chalk did on the other side there, did a lot of damage with the spells, and got a big silence to set up that kill onto the Hercules as well. So, uh, all things told, Austin the Max having a, a bit more impact than Anatoly was able to have as the mid camps come back up once again. He's probably held his ult too, right? He didn't yes. burn it when everything was happening. He waited for the everyone else to burn their stuff, and I, I think they thought the Chalk ult was down, because they kept fighting even though it was a losing fight with that huge silence. Yeah, and, and well, we should mention about Team Eager that with, with Zatman gone, he is the in-game play caller. Uh, much less kind of one of their star players. But this is a huge crack and hitting two with the middle portion there for all the bonus damage. But it wasn't enough to find any kills. And now Matty Pocket surging forward again. Throwing out all that ability and bonus damage. Or I'm sorry, base damage that Sobek has. The two members that get low, Jerby and Soulshiner, are back to the base. And Eagers open up the Gold Fury for themselves. Vettium, Matty Pocket, and Awesome to the Max are going to try to contest. Lassus looking to Lysteel up if he can. They're going to root out Kabob. Here comes a big silence out of Chalk. Where's the Hog? Eager will get the Gold Fury, but can they get out cleanly? Matty Pocket continuing to move forward. The no escape. Can it hit all three? It will pull two. The Boulder just off the mark, though, for the double hit, but they still find the kill on the Matty Pocket. And Eager makes it out of here cleanly, finding themselves a kill as well. The, really the dream. They'll give up Kabob for it, but. Uh, it, it was a very hairy Gold Fury, and they end up getting quite a bit out of it. Yep, and they're still looking for more enemy, that is. They fought off Eager after they got the Gold Fury, but Awesome to the Max just a hair too late with that silence. If he had gotten that off, that very easily could have gone to enemy. But Eager was able to burst it down. The silence has such a long wind-up time, and it's read so well. Eager doing a great job of basically full committing to the Gold Fury, and then saying, all right, we're done. But Kabam, you're done. Like, and the, they, and the big they difference, right? In this, in this engagement is that, as we mentioned in the last Gold Fury, enemy takes it, same kind of situation, you get pushed off the mark, they lose a god, but this time, all of the buffs aren't up for them to steal away from yes. Eager. So this is just pure gain, and I'm sure Eager knows a little bit about gains, but they're, they're going to get some here as... As there's not much room that enemy can make up now, as there's really no camps available on the map for them to farm. Yep. Awesome to the max. He's gonna oh, spot gonna this out on a here. ward, but this is a four-man rotation onto the solo lane. Dude. No ultimate available, and he's gonna eat a crack into the face. There's nowhere for him to go. Yeah, and Aurora, he's perfectly happy to eat his Neath ultimate. He'll throw out the defensive steroid as well. Jerby, he's lucky the chains were up. If he gets chained there, he and he's forced to burn his beads again. Tough situation. Dare to care. He's gonna ult all the way across the map, as they're gonna look for the kill onto Vedium. He pops a sprint three, dash into taunt. Will it be in time? It will. Vedium to fall. Kabam credited for that kill as well. Yet another stack of power. 10 now to his credit. He's still the 200 gold behind that he's been all game, but he has the level, and he's also getting that passive power like you said. Yeah, that, that you, passive power is worth at least 300, 400 gold. Dare to Care is once again, almost every game, like this, this guy right now is I think the key to Eager's success and how well they've done in the challenge cut moving forward. He is such a good jungler. He gives me the feels that kind of Anister does. Maybe not the mechanical skill, although he is very talented, but he is everywhere. Mm -hmm. He is right now 3, 0, and 8. 11 of the 12 One kills he's kill, been part he wasn't of. there. Yeah, that's One kill. Very, that's very impressive. Granted, he is playing a god with the global repositioning mm -hmm. ability, but um, the build as well, allowing for that. A lot of HP out of that ethereal staff. Uh, and, and a lot. Can we take a look at the Midgarian male here and highlight that item on the Athena in the in the second position? A lot of HP, big physical protection, and the anti in hand capabilities as well. It just makes Soul Shiner's life really difficult to move around the fights. Awesome to the max. He wants to throw out in hands as well. And Vedium, uh, he has his trouble. Even even Sobek needs the in hand here and there to get his passive up. Yep. So I mean, this item is just really great against the composition from enemy. It's not maybe that double hunter that you would expect to see this item this early on. But with the HP that it grants. It still is fine for the Athena jungle. It's the three frontline comps that Eager has really adopted. They have a Roar who, even if he gets behind, they still have other initiates. That's that's one of the problems with Ares is when he gets behind, he is one of, if not the worst god from behind. But they still have the Hercules. They still have the Athena to look for initiates elsewhere. Yeah, well, and, and the Hercules, he's definitely left some, some stuff on the table here, has Anatoly. Um, but now with the Jotun's Wrath, you know, he'll have more opportunities. And, and, and the itemization is definitely spot on here from Anatoly. Uh, and he's really playing to his strengths, which we kind of always say it's the team fighting phase, more or less, is, is where he shines. And now with Jotun's Wrath Mystical Male, he has the right items to continue to aggress in these fights, get more of those driving strikes out, and continually reposition here. Three blinks coming out from Team Eager. I, this is interesting. Well, Derek had his, right? Yes. No surprise for Ares as well. It's really Lassus with that, aggr that aggro blink. Because he, he, he has a level 2 to where he can pick up combat blink, but... I don't know if he's going to follow the same suit as he does in casuals or in ranked, but he likes the aggressive 
tier three blink, the regular blink, not the combat. Sure, one. I think if they pull, I think if they win the next fight and the next gold fear, you may see just the tier three blink come out and look to continue to turn the screws and keep the pressure up. But if if Ego doesn't pull ahead and this game stays close, it's got to be the combat blink. Just offers so much more utility. As Matty Pocket, he'll get aggressed onto. It looks like he he had to uh, use uh, some of his magic immunity there to get away from that one. Soul Shiner's doing no damage to Derek Care. He is so tanky. He's four that levels e staff up. That is just like no yeah, thanks. It's just so much health. And Derek Care is looking for another engage. He's going to taunt out Soul Shiner here in just a second. But Magi's is available, but he's still taking so much damage. Kraken's off the mark. Now we see Matty Pocket trying to re-engage, lurking in the water, but there's no follow-up. He has to back off, too. Yeah, last is with that red buff and all of that base damage out of the levels. You can see even off of the mark how much damage it did to Giannis with the outside. Now Austin the Max, he's likely dead. Driving Strike should be able to keep him here. No, he'll get the ultimate off, but that's the Chalk ultimate burned as Kabam maintains the minion. Front line here, Matty Pocket, couple more hits. No, he's forced to dash away. Anatoly wants to tank the tower for the team. They really want this tier two. And Thor, he's trying to farm up a little bit here on the backside. And now they'll re-engage the pull coming out. They know Chalk has no immunity. So pluck him forward. The ultimate use as well from the Hercules. Needs the ultimate to keep Hercules briefly in place, but it's not enough to find the kill. Anatoly gonna heal up through that one. Kabam takes a tremendous amount of damage. Is there a snipe available from Jerby? He's going to no, go for he, it now. He used it he to re-engage, to get back to the lane. Now Lass is in a lot of trouble. Soul Shiner is going to have to back off, but a pluck by Jerby. He's Here forced the ultimate. Ages, but he stood in place. He's so low. Can Anatoly find the driving strike? Aurora going to kill him with chains. Now let's go back to where Lassus has not been picked up by Soul Shiner. Now he's going to eat the second hit from Dare to Care's shield wall. Will they close back in on him? You see Anatoly underneath the tower. He wants to close off Soul Shiner here. Did he cover the option? He did! Anatoly with the spacing gets the kill on Soul Shiner and a double in that engagement. And like we cued him, we say he's a team fighting god and a team fighting player. And while well, he really flexes his muscles there and draws even in the KDA, re engaged out from Dare to Care. Matty Pocket. It didn't have enough damage to kill the Sobek here. It seems unlikely, but the percent damage from Aurora's Flame Shield. Nearly enough, but not by just gonna, a bit. They'll take Cold Fury zone him out. and Tier 1 mid. So they'll get a huge gold influx here. Uh, and, and maybe even the Tier 1 on the far right side as he last is shading that way. Just such good map awareness coming out of Eager's mid laner. Yeah, it's 5k. Probably about 6,500 gold lead at this point. Yeah, 6,600. 13k Yeesh. experience, and that's where one like, level 20. You just you just look across the board, right? Junglers, they're three levels ahead. Lassus, three levels ahead. Aurora at the support, three levels ahead. Kabam, one level ahead. Just across the board, they're getting these base stats online, and and really those level the the rank four ultimates, which is mm -hmm. key there. Yes, you're absolutely right there. And Athena now with that void stone complete, big aura item to amplify the magical damage from her Poseidon and Ares. Doesn't look like we'll see the Pythags this game. Um, it could be last time. It, it could be the last item for Ares, but I doubt we'll see him itemize into a sixth. Like, he, he kind of needs to pick up one more defensive item. Uh, probably a Magi's after this winged, and then maybe you'll see the Pythags, but... Um, that's about as far as I would expect it to go. I, I suppose Athena could still pick it up as well, but... Awesome and the Max, they, they really kind of tried to bully him over the last about eight to nine minutes. And now they'll force out the Chalk Ultimate one more time. Aurora that, continues to search forward. That's what's important here. They forced out the Chalk Ultimate before the fights happen about two to three times in a row. They find him off on an island, either on solo lane or you saw him on that fight on left lane. He was just on the wrong Look spot. Look at the initiation here from Aurora. He's going to force the team to split, and they're going to find one and awesome to the max. They're going to dump the Kraken on him as well, and down he will fall. One more member gone from enemy now, 17 to 9 in favor of Eager at 24 minutes. The Neath Ultimate expended as well there. Matty Pocket, you can see the Sobek off to the side. Dare to care, dash it forward, and the Blink. His initiation range is the whole map now as Soul Shiner's forced to beads and fall away. I'm not sure he really needed him there, though. There wasn't a Kraken available. It's Jerby they're going to try to force out. And they'll get the ultimate for, away from Jerby as well. So much forced out from enemy, and they get nothing in return, losing their solo lane. That's what they've been doing all game. They're finding these players just a little bit out of position, hard committing. They're not dumping their ultimates to kill. They're just basically screaming, enemy, you're going to have to use all your actives and your ultimate to get out. We've seen it all game. And Kabam holding his own in this duel lane, he doesn't really need to worry about anything. And Eager, they're in position for the Fire Giant. I don't know if they want to start it off or just bait it. Yeah, it looks like they want to fall back. We take a look at Golden Hand here off that last set of engagements. Uh, actually, not that much. I mean, about a thousand gold apiece here. But, but at this stage, at pre-25 minutes, they probably want to spend that gold. Uh, Hercules really leading the chart there. You can see getting very, very close to finishing off that Magi's, and that's probably where they'll like to go back. And they'll want that Magi's for the Fire Giant engagement for sure. Look at this player damage, and Kabam and Neath, they haven't really been in all the team fights, but you can see how well they've been trading out there. Yeah. Kabam going to back. He's going to hit level 20 as well. He's probably going to start his crit online after this. Yeah, hidden dagger. So he's going to really start chunking. 
One of the maybe the the best things about this eager composition is that with that Sobek pick coming out early, it's such a clever pick in the Ares because he fills that same kind of role as Sobek does. Very high base damage on his abilities. Doesn't need a lot of items to do a lot of damage. But looking at that that player damage chart that we just had up, you can just see if we can bring it back up again, the player damage chart. How much more damage the Ares has done to the Sobek? Nearly six thousand, right? He's doubled. I mean, Double look and at a half. Thor. Thor is four K behind Jungle Athena, and Jungle Athena is the third lowest on the chart. They've just had... Soul Sander's not been able to get anything online, and... Well, look, we can put it in perspective here. Ares has done as much damage as Thor and Sobek combined, basically. Yes. And, and that's that's just goes to show you how well Aurora is playing this god right He's now. He's hitting every chain almost. Yeah, his, his chains have been so on point, and, and finding the right targets with the percent damage, getting those high HP targets with the Searing Flesh, and... Uh, all things told, it's been a very good game from him, and he's he really made up some of that period where Anatoly was lagging uh, behind in terms of establishing their front line. Yep. Enemy's going to have to look to slow down this game. They can't keep playing at Eager's pace because if they keep getting caught out or fighting, they're going to lose until they can... They need to get penetration items online, really. And yes. we see Obsidian's Shard started by Jeremy. We see the Titan's Bane started by Soul Shiner on that Thor, but they're not completed. And if they're fighting now, they're fighting into so much protections, they're not going to be able to find a kill. Yeah, and you can see the protections continue to be stacked up on that front line. Athena coming out of the jungle for Dare to Care. And she's going to get so much more done than Thor will later in the game. I mean, yeah, as this, as they get to the level 20s and they get to their full bills, Thor just doesn't bring much more to the table. The Athena ultimately going to be expended on Anatoly, trying to keep him alive. Down comes Dare to Care, but into a mess. He falls. Five members of enemy are there. They kill Anatoly. They may get the Athena as well. The ultimate comes out from Chuck. It comes out from Ares as well. The Kraken was on the mark for Awesome Max who falls yet again. He's been teed off on, but here's Matty Pocket. One more single strike. will pick up a couple kills, but he'll toss back. Will he go down? Need a couple crits to come out of Kabam. He presses the gas pedal and will burn down Matty Pocket. Three members down for Eager for now, but it's Kabam and Aurora that remain, and they are more powerful than Jerby and Vedium for the moment, and they look likely to continue the pressure here into the mid lane. Yep, great fight though for enemy. That is a huge three for three trade out as long as they could have been their tier two as well. Mm -hmm. As long as they're trading out even, it's a win for enemy because they're behind. They're getting more gold off these players who haven't been dying recently. They're just, they're worth more gold. The Gold Fury, she'll be back up, or I'm sorry, she is back up now. Uh, so if we, s oh, that's a that's a big double portal. Do they have any damage to follow it up? No, splitting the uprights there is Jeremy. Or could kill someone if he hits his chains, I think. Yeah, I think he's waiting for one more second to come back up. He has chains now, oh, he and he'll get it, but another. he gets banished right away. He'll get the second chain as well. He'll get the third as well through the wall. What a player, but it's not enough to kill Vedium as the heal comes back up and Kabam not in position, but Aurora barely surviving there. If he had had more health and been able to commit there, Walk that 100% yeah. would have been turned around by uh, Team Eager. Not able to find it, though, and... Taking a look at the gold, it's about a 10k gold lead for Team Eager. They've yet to even really flirt with the Fire Giant. I think that might be their next target here. They're getting a little bit worried about diving too far. I'd like to see them post up at this Fire Giant and bait players out because enemy themselves have been getting out of position pretty often, caught often, and I, I just think that's going to be the best move. Yeah, and, and really Eager doesn't have the best objective squad, right? Hercules... Doesn't really have any kind of in-hand items. It's really a lot on Kabam to do the damage and Lassus as well with the Trident. So they'll take the Gold Fury instead. It'll be the fourth of the game, the third going their way. And they'll expand upon their lead a little bit. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it, this is the next option for them is going to be this Fire Giant. But they need a couple picks. If they get initiated on by Soul Shiner, uh, it, considering how long it will take them to burn down the Fire Giant, they could get in some trouble. So they'll take the, the safe route, I think. Yep. Okay. They do have a lot of pick potential, like you were saying. Really not this huge Ooh, it is tier three fighting. Blank. It is tier 3 blink. So three tier 3 blinks for Team Eager. This is going to work because of how far ahead he is. But if enemies start to catch up, this this blink could, could turn poorly. I mean, it's going to be a question of if anyone an enemy can dive Lassus. And taking out a first look at it, no one can. No one's going to be able to really commit to Lassus. Jump Typ isolation. Typically, you're going to... For Lassus, you have Yeah, that, that extra HP, right? Yeah. As you said, no one can really dive him. And that extra HP, HP you get out of the Gem of Isolation okay, is yeah. adding to that. It's it's going to be hard to lock him down. Yeah, absolutely. You, you'd like to see like a Sir Ket, right? If, if they were facing a Sir Ket, they'd be worried. But they're facing Soul Shiner, and they have so much peel potential. Soul Shiner, come late game, Thor falls off. He's not hitting as hard as he was early game, and they're going to be able to knock him off Elastis. Yeah, basically. even with his Magi's, it just doesn't feel like it's going to be enough. He's going to have to use his beads most likely to bail out of whatever initiation he goes in on, unless he's able to kill someone right away. Well, Eager, they've started up this Fire Giant. They're trying to zone Matty Pocket. It's down to about 50%, and that's where they're going to leave it as the Sobek Ultimate is forced out. And they're just all happy game. with that. 
All game, they've been forcing out ultimates. Even there, Soul Shiner having to hard commit on a Hercules. Dare to Care is going to come in, force Magi's off of Soul Shiner. Aurora hitting another chain on Vedium, and Anatoly is looking to continue this fight. Yeah, he's moved to the front lines here. The Boulder could be coming out fairly soon as they're in this choke. Shibalanki Ultimate going to spread this fight out a little bit, and it's Soul Shiner, the one that's taking the brunt of the damage from Shibalanki, and he will go down. The Fear No Evil. Is not used so there's no Hunbots in this game. No, that, that's called no escape. Huge that's taunt a big into a Kraken. Kraken. Yeah. Two players killed. Kabam picking up the double. Now Anatoly turning on Matty Pocket. Lurking is down. Triple uh -oh. kill coming up from Kabam. Zap man, what? Have fun in New York. They got a new hunter. Yeah, the, the Kabam seems to be getting it done there. You saw him <laughs> take the backside of that fight, walk down Soul Shiner, and take him completely out of it. The huge reinitiation from Dare to Care into that Kraken from Lassus was just spot on. With just the tower remaining in the mid lane, and the Phoenix is exposed. Eager moving forward. This is one of the longer games we have on record in Split 2, uh, going past the 30 minute mark, and that may be more uh, that, that Eager has this very early game oriented squad, that, and they didn't really have a huge advantage, but they've broken it open through the later stages of the mid game and now are ahead by quite a bit. Yep, they're going to be pressuring this Phoenix, and with no one to stop them, this is going to be free. They probably have a lot of gold in hand. They're, they're going to look to either take the tier 2 and back, or just, yeah, they're going to grab the tier 2. It's free gold on the map still. A little bit of time left for Awesome to the max to spawn out, and and he's really the save, one of the saving graces right now, level 20. He, he, it's very important to have him. I think they're going to make Zatman move out of the house? I, he's already gone. I'm sure Kabom's already like... He's on, on his way to Florida? Yeah, he's like right now, he's in comms like, alright guys, I got a flight 10 p.m. tonight, I'll see you then. <laughs> so, Eager, they'll show a little patience here, falling back after taking the final tower and the fire giant side, Phoenix. Uh, they'll spend some of that, those big golden hand numbers, four digits across the board, a couple thousand stacked up as well on uh, really some of the worst guys you could, like Shibalanka had the most gold there, right? So he... Uh, Rage he, online, <laughs> Deathbringer. He's ready. Almost online. Kabam topping damage charts. Lass is falling right after. Jerby has been doing a lot of poke damage, but just not able to secure a kill or, or too many kills here in this matchup. Yeah, I wouldn't say he struggled. Um, Jerby, he, he hasn't been getting picked very much. He's playing Giannis as you would expect Giannis yeah. to be played fairly safely. Dealing the damage where he can, it's just been, they haven't had a lot of opportunities to pick people off even with mm -hmm. that burst damage. I'd say it's really Soul Shiner hasn't been effective in this yes, match, and that's agreed. really the key for enemy is he had no presence early game. It was really dare to care, making all the plays, and then Soul Shiner trying to re-engage, but his, his ultimates, he just hasn't found an ultimate that's been game-changing. It's been, it's been the, I mean, you can maybe attribute it to the vision, you can attribute it to potentially just map control and game awareness, but... Oh, looks like Jerby's DC'd. Oh, good guy Kabam. Yeah, good guy Kabam oh, there. Nope. Aurora says none of that. Jerby, Jerby starts walking around and yeah. there's nowhere for him to go. He's crippled. He's yeah, he's gonna he's yeah, gonna he's fall done. to Aurora's damage. Chain's doing too much. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, as as we were talking there about Soul Shiner, right? It, he definitely has been forced to play that counter initiation game, and his ultimate had got baited out. The Chalk and Thor ultimate got baited out. You mentioned earlier, like three, four times in a row. Mm -hmm. And that's really where Eager broke this one open. That's where this 10k advantage came from, was just not having access to these ultimates on the side of enemy. They're going to go on this Phoenix, and enemy can't even defend it. They have to back off with Jerby dead and Soul Shiner. It's a 3v5 if they look to fight. They're going to have to give up all three Phoenixes, but Eager's not going to give them time. Yeah, Eager's going to press the, well, the gas pedal again here. They're going to move in. Chalk trying to maintain some sort of front line, but with the stun coming out, Kabam, he needs a life seal off Matty Pocket. The sickening strike is affecting him, but he'll bees the way and hit these minions, and Kabam, that back up to about 50% HP, and Eager, once again, I think the call, I think I think half the team is saying we're fighting and the other half is saying we're not. Kabam wanted to run away there, but still engaged. Kabam was pretty low, and Soul Shiner's gonna look for him in the back. He hits the stun and actually a roar eating that Neethal. That could have been spelled disaster. Lasses, he's taking Berserker's barrage and just shrugging it off. No yeah, that, damage coming out of Soul Shiner there. It was a ridiculous amount of damage coming out of that trident. The rod it's a hootie likely done here on Lasses as well in this engagement, so. You can see each time he swung that trident, chunks being taken out of Thor. The Athena ultimately being used on Anatoly. They want to go in here. The Kraken's right on the mark. They'll get two out of that one. The Titan taking damage as well. Down to about 40%, 30% HP. Eager staying in here. Can they finish it off with the minions? They will indeed. The Chaos Titan falls. Eager Gaming takes game number one in the two-game set versus enemy esports, my friends. Team Eager. Hey, they flex their muscles a little bit here, although enemy not necessarily considered mm -hmm. the strongest team in the Pro League last split. Well... They were the worst team. Yes. They didn't win a game. But it looks like Eager maybe was uh, knocked down in the Challengers League erroneously, as they were very powerful. Yes. They they just barely missed out on qualifying for they the did. spring split. And much like Epsilon, they showed their strength throughout the throughout the Challengers Cup, winning every single week, but the first one when they had, had to deal with the lane swaps. And Dare to Care played fantastically, I think. I don't know if he was player of the game, but he, he's my personal pick. He was yeah, everywhere on the map. 
forcing and it was forcing out these ultimates and really enemy took a an incredibly unfortunate spill in that mid team fight remember mm -hmm. when dare to care was channeling his ultimate onto anatoly and anatoly Barely survived lived with one health they get the dare to care they get defender of olympus off and eat a hercules boulder right after that an enemy took what could have been a clean fight and lost it. Yeah, I totally agree. That's where the, the game turned uh, completely in favor of Eager. But First Blood is ready, and uh, as you recall, this one did not go to the side of Eager. It was it was this big burst combination coming out between Soul Shiner and Giannis in the mid lane, but the kill does get returned back the other way for Eager there. Yep. Thor falls right after that. So even with the First Blood on the Lassus, Lassus still able to pull ahead of Jeremy there uh, and, and just have more game impact. They, they had It was the, that Ares, Cripple, Forcing them to be slowed and kind of make some hasty decisions. Whirlpool, Kraken, easy kill. I, I think the Ares pick was probably the the best pick that Eager made in this team comp. I mean, you look again, it, it's, you have the Thor, right? You're able to cripple out his hammer throw. He can't teleport anymore. You have Sobek, who's really named to fame, is hitting his pluck. And mm. if he's crippled out, he can't use it as well. And, and also... Giannis, right? He can't portal through walls if he's crippled. The cripple... Of course, he's the ultimate. And it, and it was double cripple, too, coming out of Poseidon. So, a ton of cripples, and the Ares did a lot. Aurora hitting almost every single chain. Uh, really, everyone across Eager played fantastic. They did, yeah. And Giannis and the Thor and so many gods that rely heavily on having mobility options mm -hmm. available to them. Their ultimates forced out more yes. often than not, and that seemed to be the name of game number one. But game number two is what's coming our way. This will be our final game of the day, guys.